Meet Martin Rees, astronomer royale, and he's a British cosmologist. He's written all kinds of books, and I'm going to show you nine books. Here are three of them, one on the cosmic coincidences, another on astrophysical cosmology, and one on gravity's fatal attraction about black holes. He's written about before the beginning, and just six numbers that describe our universe and the cosmic habitat. He's interested in the future of humanity and whether we'll kill ourselves. So, for example, he he's written a book, Our Final Century, From Here to Eternity and Infinity, <laughs> on the future prospects for humanity. And also, he was a 2015 member of the Order of Merit. Here he is, just behind the Queen of England. And I sat down with him in Hawaii and asked him the question, are we alone? Are we alone? Mm. Well, I think we, we don't know that question, and the main answer is biological. The one exciting development in the last decade or two has been the realization that planetary systems are common. Most of the stars we see in the sky are orbited by retinues of planets, like the solar system, and we suspect that there are a billion planets, more or less like the Earth, in our galaxy. But, of course, the difficult question is, does life get started? Because although we understand Darwinian evolution, we don't understand the basic transition from biochemistry to the first replicating, metabolizing systems. And until we understand that, we don't know whether it was a rare fluke or whether it's something that would happen in any similar environments. I'm hopeful, incidentally, that within the next decade or so, people will sort out that question because serious people are working on it for the first time. And I think there's a genuine hope we'll understand the chemistry which led to the first life. And that will tell us two important things. The first is, was it a fluke or would be expected? And second, is the particular biochemistry of DNA, RNA special? Or if there is other life, could it have a different chemical basis? Those are two questions you might understand. It's absurd um, and pretentious to claim to be able to assess probabilities when we are so ignorant about uh, all stages in evolution. And also, of course, even if there is intelligent life, we don't know what the chances are that we'd be able to detect it or recognize it. It might be so different that we can't recognize it. Um, if you ask me for my take on uh, SETI and what it might find, it's the following. Uh, we know something about what's happened on Earth in the last four or four and a half billion years. Uh, we know that uh, um, there was no technological activity for nearly all that time. And for the last few centuries, there has been technological activity leading to the possibility of sending out signals, going into space, etc. We also suspect that within a century or two, humans may be superseded by inorganic intelligence. That inorganic intelligence will not be limited by the restrictions of the hardware in human brains. It may quickly supersede us. And of course, it will not particularly want to be on the Earth, because the environment of the Earth that is essential for us um, is suboptimal for um, a advanced robot, which may prefer to be under zero G, for instance. So uh, I would guess that uh, even though human beings may survive on the Earth, the advanced intelligences one or two centuries from now will be inorganic materials away from the Earth. In science, we identify the Copernican Revolution, where the sun became the center, not the Earth, and also, I guess, the Darwinian Revolution, where we realize that we're animals. Do you think that in finding extraterrestrials, it will initiate some type of other revolution that we haven't given a name to yet? Well, it may do. Of course, uh, in a sense, finding these zillions of planetary systems is a kind of Copernican demotion. Mm -hmm. But of course, at the moment, it may still be the case that life is unique to this planet. It could still be the case that despite the vastness of the galaxy and the variety of planets in it, uh, this Earth is uh, the most important part of the galaxy, because it could be only here that life has evolved to the state of intelligence. And if that's the case, it doesn't mean that life is forever a trivial um, afterthought, because uh, if we don't screw things up in the present century, then uh, um, life, and life in quotation marks, which will be mainly, I think, inorganic life, could spread from the Earth through the rest of the galaxy. So the Earth could be the place from which the entire galaxy is seeded with life. So 
the failure of the SETI search is disappointing for the searchers, but uh, allows us to be less cosmically modest because it allows us to think of the Earth as being a very special place in the galaxy, which it would not be, of course, if it uh, uh, was just one of uh, many places where intelligent life had emerged. So then we could become the stewards of not only the Earth, but the stewards of the galaxy and the local cluster and the entire universe if we well, were alone. Yeah, uh, well, well, it could then be that uh, uh, what happens here on Earth, if it goes very badly, is not just a terrestrial but a cosmic disaster. The search for aliens is, is uh, infamous for us looking for ourselves. I, I think mm -hmm. in Jules Verne's time, the people who saw UFOs saw Instead of flying spaceships, they saw flying galleons. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, yes, yes. So, um, so I'm wondering how guilty are we of doing that, and can we? How do we undo that, either emotionally or rationally? Um, well, of course, another important dictum is extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, mm -hmm. and so we will need very strong evidence to. Uh, um, believe credibly that we have discovered an alien because to, it is so but important. To, but to evaluate extraordinary, some people think, oh, that's what I want to believe, therefore it's not extraordinary. And if you're unaware of what you want to believe, then you easily yes. think that's, that's not extraordinary at all. Yes, yes, yes. But, but of course, uh, um, it's not clear what people want because uh, uh, I'm not sure I want aliens to exist because I might be equally happy. It would be duller <laughs> in the universe, but it would make the Earth more cosmically important. And so you, you can be less cosmically modest if you are unique. And so uh, I'm ambivalent. I, it's worth the search, but uh, I won't be disappointed either way. So, okay. <laughs> so you, you're a, so I've I, got no bias. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, how about if we did find aliens? We had a verifiable artificial signal tomorrow from mm -hmm. a telescope. What, how would that change your worldview? Or would you go out and dance, for example? Or would you laugh? Would you? Cry? I was talking to Jill Tarter yesterday, and she yes. thought they saw something for about twelve hours, mm -hmm. and then when they found out it was just the Soho satellite, mm -hmm. they started to cry mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they'd been so excited, yes, and then yes, they're yes. so disappointed. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it, it would be the most important discovery in our lifetime. There's no doubt about that, um, and. Uh, um, uh, as a discovery, you know, one would be extremely excited, there's no doubt about that. But that's all, excitement, then the next day, uh, nothing? Uh, surely it must... Uh, well, it would remain in your consciousness. It would remain in our consciousness. Yes, well, absolutely. they said that about the picture of the Earth from far away. Yeah, you know, yeah. that, and that has remained in our yes, consciousness. Yes, but yes. when it first came out, it was very, whoa. Absolutely. But now it's kind of sunk in a little bit, and we kind of take it for granted that, yes, we're, the Earth is a spaceship that we should try to take care yeah, of. Yeah, yes, yes. And how, but what type of implications will the discovery of an alien civilization from, I don't know, a star 20 light years away do? Well, it will have. I mean, of course, you mentioned the impact of the Apollo 8 photographs. And, you know, I never look at the moon without thinking of Neil Armstrong now, you know. So it, it, it has affected my consciousness. Um, but I, th I suppose the point about uh, any detection of, of, uh, of life, uh, then um, it would be hugely important anyway. Um, and I think many of us will want to focus on what we can do to follow it up. Um, you know, how, how can we test it more? What's the next thing to do? Should we look in other places, uh, etc.? Et and so I, I think all of us, um, whether we're astronomers or not, uh, would modify our research programs to uh, take it into account because following up on it um, would clearly be a, a top priority in science and that would be accepted as such. Your comment about you have no bias, does that mean that as the head of an oversight committee of a $100 million program, you don't care one way or the other whether it succeeds or not? Well, I'd be very, <laughs> I'd be very excited indeed if it did succeed. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And you would be excited if it didn't? Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, be, uh, I wouldn't be too personally depressed. I mean, obviously, um, uh, I would feel sorry because obviously those people who put effort into something uh, want, to, want to get a result. We all want to get a result. But of course, um, thinking as a sort of human being, uh, then uh, some people would see it as a human demotion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and probably some religious people would anyway.